Hello ladies and gentlemen, Aski here for Nerf TV with a hero overview for Strife. Today let's look at Bastion. Bastion is a short range tank who specialises in dealing AoE magic damage and soaking up attacks. He's built to be right in the middle of the action, dealing damage to those around him in team fights while soaking up their attacks and providing some support to his team. Let's take a look at his skills and in what order to get them for a tank focused build. So at level 1 start off with golden braces, this is an AoE support skill that will give a shield to all those around you and yourself. This is great when you're pushing lanes as you can buff the friendly creeps so they can all soak up extra damage from the towers, giving you more time to take down the tower itself before falling back. Having access to this early on also allows you to fight aggressively without burning as much HP in the process. You'll also be able to comfortably get in amongst the creeps and last hit them with the security of knowing if the enemy tries to attack you, you're able to cast the shield to protect yourself. Then at level 2 you pick up your first point in Zydek Charge. This is a gap closer that also comes with a handy stun. You won't be putting any more points into this skill now until the late game as it's pretty damn effective with just one. The range is really nice and it makes it useful for both initiation and escaping and once you get your ultimate at level 6 it becomes a vital part of the perfect setup. At level 3 however you're going to put a point into Breath of Oracles. This is a coned AoE that deals a reasonable amount of magic damage, however Bastion's mana pool and regen are never going to be that high so spamming the skill will burn through it fast. Save it for times when it will be really effective. Then at level 4 and 5 you're going to put more points into Golden Braces. This sets you up nicely going to level 6 as this is when ganks begin to occur and also you'll be pushing hard to take down the enemy tower at this point. You can use the braces to buff yourself and your lane partner if you come under attack and also to keep your creep wave very strong so you can bring down their tower incredibly quickly. Follow up at level 6 by getting your ultimate, the chosen one. This skill is mainly for team fights and it's pretty effective. It starts by having a 3 second charge up timer which is then followed by an AoE coming out from wherever Bastion is stood, which deals damage to any targets nearby and slows them. You will then have 8 seconds with added auto attack damage to allow you to focus down a key target. So once you have the Chosen One, you cast it, wait 2 seconds before jumping in with Zydek Charge so the AoE from Chosen One hits as many targets as possible before focusing your auto attacks along with your teammates to bring down a specific target. You also want to try to distract the enemy into attacking you as much as possible. As you come under attack you cast golden braces, hopefully buffing a teammate or two in the process. At level 7 max out braces and then level breath of oracles to max. Get your ulti again at level 11, max Zydek charge and then finish off with the chosen one at level 15. Now for your pet I would recommend tortoise as the only real choice. He has defense and healing and these are the two things you need the most. For items, start with healing rod and health potions. The healing rod provides fantastic sustain in the lane and along with tortoise you can set up some fantastic baits on opponents. To do this you let your HP get a little bit low and try to get the enemy to trace you. Pull them towards your end of the lane before using the rod and tortoise to recover HP fast and then jump on them with your teammate. This is a really good way to pick up a kill in the early game. Next up, take your pick of boots, either Spring, Warp or Inertia. Spring boots are used to either position yourself better for your ultimate or as a means of escape from a bad situation, whereas Warp boots give you a more global presence, meaning you can get into position for team fights or set up split pushes in the late game. Inertia boots are really useful because they add HP and are very good against CC heavy teams. Great for a tank. After this, you either want to get Captain's Crest or Dampening Cloak, depending on if you're up against magical or physical damage in the lane. Hopefully, you're able to go for Captain's Crest, as this will make pushing more effective as it buffs ally creeps around you. It's especially great against anyone who struggles to clear creeps quickly, like Rook for example. Now, you should consider getting both items here, as it's a fairly cheap way to boost your defences. However, consider what the enemy team has. If their magic damage is very low, it won't be worth getting the cloak. I should also mention that you could wait until after getting the cloak or the crest to get the boots. If you're not planning on roaming or chasing down kills, this could be a good idea as it will let you push your lane harder, but if you think you're going to be using the speed to get an advantage, always get the boots first. Next on the list is the Inferno brand. This is a key item in the build as it will add everything Bastion is good at, defence, team fight damage and pushing lanes. It will emit an aura around Bastion that will deal damage to any foes nearby, and as a tank you'll be in the middle of a team fight, making this very effective. It's also useful for split pushing lanes as you can use it to bring down enemy creeps faster without burning through your very low mana pool. Into the late game you want to get the Everwinter Charm and a Giant's Visage. The charm will inflict an AoE around the caster which also slows enemies, really useful in the middle of a team fight along with your ultimate, and the Giant's Visage gives a large health boost that also grants you extra power based on a percentage of your HP. So if you have 2400 HP you'll get 24 power, quite a tidy little bonus. For the last items you have two options and it depends on if you're taking big physical or magical damage, either the barrier token or the iceforged plate. 
These items are both late game purchases, however if you find yourself suffering big time at a particular source of damage and they've got a very well fed hero, look at getting these items before the Everwinter Charm and the Giant's Visage. They can really help you survive a lot if you're getting struck down by heavy hitters. This route for items maximises Bastion's strengths, but it doesn't really support his weaknesses. Your mana pool will remain quite low, with the Everwinter Charm being the only thing to boost it, so keep that in mind and don't spam your skills. However, the boost it gives to the areas that Bastion specialises in more than makes up for the lack of mana. Your ability to tank hits will be greatly increased with a mixture of armour and health, and your AoE potential will be excelled by the Inferno Brand and the Everwinter. And you'll be pushing lanes with ease with the Inferno Brand and Captain's Crest. During the early game, you want to focus on aggressive pushes to get the early tower. You'll be able to buff your creeps so they will easily outnumber your opponents. Pushing up into your enemy's tower radius will cause their tower to attack your minions, making it harder for them to last hit, which will also cost your enemy team money, even if they're still getting the EXP. Your lane partner should be getting on support, and you need to work with them to set up bait and switch traps, or lure the enemy out of position. Your sustained in lanes means you should have little reason to head back to base, and by leveling gold embraces early on, you should have no problem about dying either. Then in the mid game make sure to bring down your tower fast. You're strong at pushing and there should be no problem at all. Once it's down on your lane you can begin to help the others on the other lanes to gank and push other towers. Picking up bold regularly with your team is a must. You should normally be trying to tank it so make sure you're the first to initiate. Use your shield to block the lasers on your allies and the healing rod and tortoise to recover your HP if you need it. Continue to make hard pushes and even pick up an inner tower or two at this point in the game. When it comes to making big pushes you can always split push away from your team as well. You're able to push so hard and should be able to bring down the inner tower so quickly, you could even start on a generator before the mid game comes to a close. Into the late game, you're going to be a key part of the team fights. Use your ulti the way I described earlier to get the most value from it and keep up the pressure on any key targets. Get in the way of skill shots and support your team with the shield. Your Inferno Brand and Everwinter Charm will add to your damage and also slow any fleeing foes and at this point in the game, one good team fight is all that counts. Make strong pushes and take down a generator or two, using Kratos for support. Kill Sindara to get him in much the same way as you would do Baldir. Try to get into position where your team can down one generator while you're damaging another with a creep wave, and then as your team moves across, they can help you down the second one. You can get two generators down in a single push. This is especially effective after a team fight when the enemy numbers are low and they're unable to counter. So that's our overview and guide to Bastion. Stay tuned for more Strife guides and videos, but for now, I've been asking you here for FTV. Thank you for watching.